All right, let me share my screen and let's keep going. Recording is in session right now. Um, let's see. We talked about the handshake. Yeah, but I mean, was that the last thing we talked about? Was it a handshake? The last thing I have on my notes is server set identifiers, which is a- Right here. Right. SSID, right? Yes. Okay, cool. All right, so uh, we said SSID is how you identify your network and also um, your SSID for your wireless has to um, have a username and password because that um, helps you with the security of it, right? The security of it. Um, so it's it's important. You don't want to, you know, have a um, should I say unsecure access point just hanging around? It's a security problem, right? So, and when you have an SSID, the identifier, you want to be sure it's just totally random, not something that's directly connected to you. All right. All right, let's go to routers now. And let me pull up, I think the picture we used the last time should be somewhere here. Yep, right here. So let's talk about a few things about routers here. Let's see. Um, So Vincent, uh, remind us here, or let me see if you guys remember, or if you, this white um, cloud thing, what does that represent in this diagram? Is it the this cloudy part? <laughs> uh, is it the connecting point where like the routers talk to each other? <laughs> I am not too sure. <laughs> The connecting point where the routers talk together, talk to each other. Sounds like a club or something, like you know where they hang out. Right. Kinda. <laughs> so this white, this white cloud is where all the routers hang out. Um, I think so, based on the diagram. <laughs> what are they hanging out doing? Uh, they're exchanging information. So where's the information coming from to each router? Coming from where? Uh. Other routers? Before it gets to other routers, where does it come from? If I email you now, right? Right. If I email you, it leaves my computer. Before it gets to your computer, it's going to go through the what? This huge space that we call the what? Mm. Are, you blank are you blanking out? Uh, let's get some help here. Sindhu, what does this white cloud represent? The RAM. The what? The WAN. What is the WAN? What's the what's another word for WAN? What does WAN mean? If you are talking to a middle schooler, Sindhu, right? What's another word for WAN that we all know? Wide area network. I know it stands for wide area network, but what is the wide area network? What is it? I need another term that we're all familiar with. Zenon, help your classmates out here. This white cloud represents what? Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> Oh boy. Uh, who's going to help us out here? The internet? Sasha, what's this white? Exactly, the internet. I feel like, I feel like, I don't know what to say, guys. This is the great big internet. Vincent, no? Yes. It's where the routers, where the routers hang out? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> The big internet is where the, 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 
the routers, <laughs> the routers, <laughs> oh, the and routers they, hang out of the inter- they hang out of the internet, right? Oh well, yeah, the internet provides them all the information they need, so they just talk to each other afterwards. <laughs> you know, I have never heard anybody say where they where they hang out. So I guess <laughs> I guess they hang out on the internet, right? Yeah, they just talk. To okay. Each other. <laughs> Okay, I gotta update my notes. The, the internet is where the routers hang out. I'm gonna use that for uh, you know for all my classes going forward. Yes. Okay. So this white cloud represents the internet. You have to be able to identify all the pieces or most of the pieces in a network diagram. This is a network diagram. Okay. Now, this cylindrical part, Vincent, I'm going to go back to you. What does this cylindrical, with this four arrows in every direction, what does that represent? I'm going to take a guess. Is data being transferred? The password? No, no data is being transferred, like information is being passed. Yeah, what is this? What is this device? What this roundish cylindrical device? It's a what? Router. Router? An AP? Vincent, did you say maybe or did you say router? I said router. Is that a question? Like, there's a question mark after you no. said it's a router? I think it's a router. Is it a router or is it a router? I think it's a router of confidence. Okay. When you see a, the same thing we have right here in this PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. When you see a network diagram with all these little shapes and computers, the cylindrical shape is always the router. Now, now, in in actual fact, like in in real world, in the real world, routers are, are not cylindrical in shape. What's the real shape of a router? That's a, let me see if, you know, let me just see where you guys are at. What, what, what's the real shape of a router? Mine is square. It's a square? Yeah. Well, let's just put it this way. A router is definitely not cylindrical. A router may look like your desktop computer. It may look like one of these computers in this network here. The only difference is, or I guess one of the differences, it's configured to do a different kind of a job. But it is a computer. In fact, any device that is capable of networking is a computer. The computer might have different functions, but it's a computer. So a router is a computer. Now, that computer or that router has a job to do. The job that the router does is to get net, what we call network packets to your network. What's a network packet? It's a packet or some data that includes your IP address. Just like if you go to a, I think we, saw, we got a picture the last time. Where's that picture now? Yep, of a you know, mail facility where mail is sorted. You have to sort the mail out first. And probably the mail is sorted out by zip code. All the mail that have a zip code are put in one space for that zip code. So when you talk about your router, think about it as something similar. All the packets or all the messages all the signals that are meant for your network or meant for your IP address go towards that IP address. So for example, this now we have two networks in this diagram. You have a network to the right. Um, how does the router know what packets belong to what network? Well, this network, just like a zip code, this network has an IP address for the network. Now, let me, let me break that down a little bit. When I say 
the network has an IP address for the network. In about a couple of chapters, we're going to talk about public and private IPs. Public and private IPs, right? If you look at your computer's IP address, the IP on your computer is not the same as if you did a Google search of what's my IP. When you do a Google search of what's my IP, the IP you're going to see there is a public IP. The IP on your computer is a private IP. That's, there's a lot of reasons for that. We're going to see that in a few chapters, but let me just say that when you send messages out of your computer, every time you're online, the IP that is seen from the outside is not the IP you see on your computer right now. The IP you see or the IP they see from the outside is the IP of your public, your, your ISP, I was going to say, your internet service provider gives a public IP. You may have heard or may never have heard that IP addresses are running out. We are running out of IP addresses, right? And so uh, there was a system in place. We're going to go into it in more detail later, but there was a system in place to help us preserve IP addresses and also for security. So, for example, um, if I went here and I said, what's my IP? It's gonna, let me see my uh, IP here. It's gonna tell me that my IP is 73.4.129.246. Now ignore this Houston, Texas, that's not very correct. We're gonna do a, we're gonna grab this here, right? And get a more accurate, um, a more accurate location. So let's go here and say IP address lookup. Let's go here. We put that, we put that IP we just found in here and say, let's see where it points us to. All right, that IP address it points us to the zip code 02472, what a town. So you can probably tell where I live or where I am right now, Watertown, Mass. Okay, now let's compare this IP address here to IP on my computer. Um, IP config. The IP on my computer is what? This is the IP on my computer, 10.0.0.112. And this is the IP that says this is my IP. Not the same, right? The IP on my computer, this IP to the right, is a private IP. The IP um, you see here is a public IP. In fact, a lot of people who probably live around me here will have this same IP, the public IP. Just like a lot of people who live around me will have my same zip code. But my private IP is unique to my computer. Just like your, or your house or your building or your apartment or something, right, is unique to your address. So zip code, unique addresses. Public IP, unique private IPs. So think about that for a second. When we go back to this diagram here, where is it? Right here. Now, this router, the router has some configurations. The main job of the router is to look at the IP address when the messages are going, going past, right? When the signals, the messages from the internet are going past, the, the, the router looks at the IP address just like somebody at the, you know, at the post office looks at the packages the router looks at the, at the message, looks for the IP. If that IP belongs to your 
uh, public IP, the router sends the message along to that router that's at that IP address. How does the router know where to send it? Routers are configured to be smart devices. Routers are configured to be smart devices. The router, just like a switch, right? The router has a routing table. The router is able to read the data in the message. The router looks at the IP. Now, you have four routers here. Let's say the message comes to this IP here. This IP that, um, I mean, sorry, the message comes to this router here. The router looks at the message. It looks at its table. And based on the information in this table, it knows where to send that message. So he knows, okay, that IP looks like it belongs to this guy here to my right. I'm just going to send it to this guy because this guy's IP, that's the IP for that message. So this has got to be the network for that message. So it sends it along to this router. When this router gets the message, the router, of course, confirms that it belongs to that, to that router's IP address. The router sends it to the switch in the network. And what does the switch do? The switch has to send the messages to all the computers based on the MAC address and the port numbers. It sends it to the, co to the connected computers within the network. So a router has a lot of work to do, right? It's got to look at all the routers. So what Vincent said now about routers hanging out, all routers, right, have messages. Think about a router like your, maybe we can say, the router is like a GPS service, like a GPS system. You want to travel from here to New York, you put in the address in your phone on your GPS, and it tells you every... You know, you're going on the way. Let's say you stop for gas, right? Or you make a detour of some sort. It's going to be telling you, uh, you got to go this way. Uh, this is the way. You got to make a U-turn. You got to, you know, stay on track. It keeps pointing you in that direction. Routers have a similar behavior. Routers are configured, right, based on reading data to know where that data is supposed to go to. And so it points it in the direction of all the other routers along the way so it can get to the right network. Now, let's look at something here. This might give you maybe some more clarity here. Um, let's get somebody's uh, computer. Sasha, let's look at your computer. Uh, could you share your screen? I want us to demonstrate something. This will help us to, you know, maybe have a better understanding. There is an exercise, one of the uh, tasks in Chapter 2. I think that's hands-on 2.6. Is it 2.6? Uh, give me one second. Let me find it. Sasha, you got to share your screen. Are you there? Yes, hold on. Um, Hands-on project 2.6 uh, should be on page 95, 94, 95. Uh, is that textbook or...? What is it? Yeah, it's, it's on page 94. Yeah, uh, trace route.
what what page is it? Sasha, you gotta share your screen first. Don't worry about the page. All we need is your command prompt. A command prompt, okay. Actually, so you have your page there. Well, so go to page, it's chapter two. Chapter two, page 95. So if you could scroll down there and then we get your command prompt. I don't know what you want me to do. Hello? Yes, what, what's the question? What what do you want me to do? Open up your command prompt. It's it's not um okay. It's not what? Is it gonna show in how it's do I not, say it? In English? No, it's 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 Japanese. It's Japanese. So there's no way for you to convert it to English, right? It's set up to be Japanese all the time. Yes. All right. Well, I don't think we can read Japanese, but the IP addresses, are they going to come? I mean, they're just going to be numbers, right? I, I mean, like we can try. Let's try. So type um, trace, trace route, T-R-A-C-E-R-T, -E trace route, R-T. Okay, space. So let's so what the trace route does is the trace route is like a GPS. It gives you an idea of, you know, the journey from when you start to the end. So if you look at that exercise, it tells us there um in the hands on um the trace route program is used to see the routers that your message has to travel through on its way to the destination. So you're gonna see all the routers um, so let's do an example from where you are, um, Sasha, to, wait a minute, Sasha, where are you right now? What? Hmm? Are you right now in Japan or are you in the United States? Uh, are you the here? United States. Okay, fine. Um, so, so we're going to do a trace from where Sasha is at to UMass Boston's server. So do a trace route to umb.edu. We're going to see, you know, like look along the way to see the routers and see what's going on. So hit enter. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah, I mean, it's not too bad. You guys, can, I mean, yeah, you guys can see what's there. Now, whatever you can see, Sasha is going to tell you what's going on. But, you know, everything that we need is kind of, is kind of, is going to be there. Numbers are always numbers, I guess. Okay, um, Sasha, what's the second to the last line? What does that say? Trace complete, right? This one? Yeah, trace yeah, complete. Yes. I try to read, I try to read Japanese. <laughs> How about uh, line five? It has asterisks. Uh, this one, it's a uh, timeout. Yeah. Timeout. Yeah. Okay. All right. So now let's look at what's going on there. Uh, like what we have um, in the book. So Josh, you want to tell us what we have here? Just, just read, just read uh, the second uh, prompt in that hands-on project. The uh, type trace, right? Trace route, so it's route, R-O-U-T-E. It's just the short form, trace R-T, but that's trace route, all right? So you want me to read that, yep. Well, we just want, that that uh, part tells us what we're seeing on the screen. So 
So uh, you can okay. read it out. Yes. Okay. So you type trace route to www. Yahoo. Press enter. You should see the output at similar figure two two four, but the details will vary depending on your location. In this output, there are five columns of information. The first column is just a count of how many routers the packet traversed. The second. Okay. Wait a second. So when you look at the screen now, right, you see five columns there. So the first column where you have the numbers, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, first of all, before we look at that, uh, so if you guys look closely at where we have UMB uh, 216.243, the second line after that, right, what it says, it says 30. You see, it says 30. If you look in the book, what it says is over a maximum of 30 hops. Right, because that's you know you may not be able to read that, but what it says is thirty hops. Now a hop is uh, basically, uh, I guess, uh, the point to point, point A to point B, one router to the next router. That's a hop. In in networking terms, if you have two routers, it goes from one router to the next router. That's two hops, one to the other, a hop. Right, so. Right there, it says 30 hops. What 30 hops means is a maximum of 30 hops. Your message will never go beyond 30 hops. If it goes beyond 30 hops, there's a serious problem, right? But the estimate, it estimates that within 30 hops, it's going to get the, to the destination, right? So uh, uh, keep going, Josh. So how many hops do we see here in this such as output here? Josh, are you there? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I was muted. Yeah. So, is it thirty, or is it just that's just ten? So this is ten, right? Ten hops. That tells you that there are ten routers along the way. Ten routers along the way. Now you're going to see something interesting here, uh, yeah. because the direction that the messages travel, right? Just like if you get into your car and you're going to New Hampshire or something, Josh, do you ever, do you think, do you ever go like in a straight line? Is that, does that happen? Is no, it like in a straight line? Like uh, Route 95 and 495 go around circles. Exactly. I mean, if you looked at it, it would be like, wow, this is a crazy journey here because you've got all kinds of stuff on the way. You've got mountains, you've got valleys, you've got, you know, you've got woods, you've got, you know, trees, you've got rocks, you've got all kinds of stuff. So when you build the road, you got to go up around all those things there and get, you know, get just the, go, the road is going to be winding and stuff like that until you get there. In a, very, in a similar way, that's how it is with um, network traffic. Network traffic, the routers have to, the routers are configured to find the best path to the destination. So look at this here. You notice um, line six and seven. Uh, if you look to the on the on the right side uh, where you have those descriptions, uh, Sasha, do you see Minneapolis there? Yes. On line six and seven. Now you might think to yourself, why on earth is the router going to go all the way to Minneapolis when? We want to just get to Gumas, Boston. That's just right here in Boston. We're all in Boston, right? I guess. Well, the router might consider it to be the, you know, the best route to take. Like, just go off there to Minneapolis and back to Boston. And there is almost no way to determine how a router will go. A router has been configured to take the best route possible. To get there the fastest time, the quickest time, however you get there, just get there. You might have to go do a zigzaggy kind of a journey, but get there eventually. All right, keep going, uh, just read the other, we wanna know what the other columns um, okay. are about. So the second, third, and fourth column shows the amount of time in milliseconds the router took to respond. Three packets are sent 
So three times are listed. The last column is the router's IP address or name and IP address. Okay, great. Um, so, a question for you, AB. So look at that second, third, and fourth columns there. You have milliseconds. Now, why do you think some are like just four milliseconds and some are like as high as 42 milliseconds? What do you think is happening uh, there? The second and fourth columns. So the first, the first router is four yep. milliseconds. The second router is 12. Then it's, you know, yep. no, you know what, just actually just look at the second column, the second column, right? So we got four milliseconds, we got 12, we got 17, we got 43, 71, 41, 40. Why is it? Why is all the time different? All the time? Uh, I believe that would be the time it takes for each um, so it takes, you know, depending on how far each one is, it'll take a amount of seconds, I believe. Okay. Um, Bobby, what do you think? Why all the times, you know, different? I think he's right. I think it would be like the distance. So someone further away would have a higher millisecond, or even if the connection's a little bit poorer than others. Yep. You guys are right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, now, back to you, Bobby. So do you think there'll be, if you are a network administrator, right? Um, how would, would you find this output useful? You know, how would you, you know, how, how does this help you or not? It would show you where your slow connections are. So if you're having trouble getting to a website, you'd be able to see where the trouble's starting from. If it's a bad connection or slow speed or something. And if it takes like an unusual amount of time, right? Yep. Yeah, that's that's what you do with it. Uh, and also, a network administrator can, uh, how do I say this? You can configure or reconfigure the path that your router takes if you have to, right? Because the router is configured to go a certain way, right? Or it's configured it might be configured to auto, you know, to decide, okay, the best route to take. But sometimes a network administrator or company can decide, well, there's always a, I mean, on at the router seven there in Minneapolis, it's 71 milliseconds. Well, we want to change that. You know, that's kind of taking too long, right? Now you might think that, I mean, 73, 71 milliseconds, is that a lot of time? I think that's pretty, it's higher than all the other ones. Go ahead. I think it's pretty high. It's not crazy, but I know that it's not great. I know you want like under 30, I think. Okay, but I mean, does it matter? I mean, seven, 71 milliseconds, right? Uh, do you think that's a big issue? I mean, would it be a big issue at all? 71, 40, 41 milliseconds, like a snap of a finger? No, I don't think so for a website, no. Uh, Will, do you think that, you know, the kind of, that amount of time is something that might be significant at all? To a person, I think it would be insignificant, but I could see like network traffic rise, it could have significance of some kind. Okay, how about if this was, uh, I think one of the guys in the other class said, if you're talking about maybe the network response of a um, self-driving car, automated, you know, vehicles, right? You know, those things are going to be powered, you know, in some way by the internet, right? And so when you think about one millisecond, so a little boy is kicking his ball around, the ball flies into the middle of the street, and this boy runs across just like little little boys do or girls to go get the ball. Now a striped a self-driving car, right, driving itself, think about the response time 
that that car has to respond, right? How much time? Milliseconds? So when you're talking about, you know, the response of devices, depend on what the device is, your milliseconds, you know, start to make a huge, huge difference. All right? So a network administrator might look at that kind of uh, information Maybe, for example, I mean, I don't know the technology of a self-driving car, but maybe, you know, obviously there's some sensors that send information back to, you know, the control panel or to the dashboard. Well, what's the response time when there's a, there has to be an immediate, you know, break in action? What's the response time? So when you think about that, um, network traffic starts becoming a big deal. And an administrator um, might run this and feel like, well, let's look at these numbers. Can we bring these numbers down? Or, you know, where's the router that's having the problem? Some kind of congestion you might want to deal with. So that's the importance of a command like trace route. It gives you an idea of what's happening um, along the way. Okay, let's keep going here. All right, uh, we'll come back to you, Sasha. I'm going to share my screen now. All right, so let's go. Let's go uh, to the PowerPoint and let's get some, you know, some more details of how your router. Um, works. All right, so we have this we have this picture here. So gonna ask you guys a couple of questions again. I want to see if you guys are getting some of this. Kelly, let's go to you, Kelly. So if you look at this picture we have on the screen here, um, first question: How many networks do you see? and how many routers are connecting the networks. Where's Kelly? What's going on? You know, when I call on somebody and there's absolutely no response in any way, I get a feeling that people just log on here and disappear and come back later to do the attendance. There's got to be some response, even if it's in the chat. So, Kelly, what's going on? All right, Pratik, let's go to you. Network. How many networks do you see and how many routers do you see in this picture connecting them? These are questions you might get in your assignment. Four routers? There are four routers and how many networks? Two. So you have two networks and you have four routers. Four networks, four. Okay, make up your mind. What is it? Can I answer, Professor? Uh, how many routers partake and how many networks do you see? Two networks and four routers. Two networks and four routers. Okay, uh, Guang Hao, what do you think? Is that is partake correct there or, or wrong or what? Hello? Go ahead. Um, I think it's correct. He's correct. There are two networks and four routers. Yes. So where are the four routers? Tell me. Where are the four routers? Um, the one that I am 
the one that LAN one is connecting to. That's one. So and the one that LAN one is connecting to up there, right? That's one. Yeah. This one, you mean this one here? This one uh, here? The one up right above LAN one. This right here? Yeah. Okay, so Guang Hao, right? Yep. Watch this. What shape is this device? What shape is this? It's a square. Is it the same as this shape here? No. So what did we just see about a router in terms of the shape? Router cylinder. Do you remember? No, sorry. Do you remember? You don't remember? Did we talk about the shape, the shape right now? Where's the other one? With the, this one right here. Did we talk about the shape of the router? Switch? Yes. So. Uh, a router cylinder. The switch would be rectangular. Okay, so if the router is the cylinder here and the switch is the box or the square, right? So back to this diagram here. Uh, Guang Hao, how many routers do you have and how many networks? One routers and two networks. So where's the router? Just is this one here? This one here? Yep. Yeah. Now, like I said, in reality, the routers are not cylindrical. They're just like regular computers, some of, some of them. But when you have a network diagram, a picture of a network, you're always going to see it like this. The cylinders are the routers. I mean, you might go for an internship, right? And, you know, the lady who wants to hire you pulls out a sheet of paper and says, Tell me how many routers you have on this sheet of paper. You got to know the routers by the, the by the drawing. You got to, as an IT person, you got to focus, be focused on what exactly the router is. All right. So we have one router. Let's talk about the networks. I want to be sure you guys are getting the networks correctly. Michael, how many networks do we have? Uh, two. Two networks. How do you? I mean, how do you tell? That uh, how can you tell? Oh, uh, it's just LAN one and LAN two. So you can tell by the description, right? Yeah. Well, what else might tell you? Um, uh, I'm looking at the uh, the router, like what it's connected to. Exactly. That's important. The, the description or the label will tell you, and what is connected to will tell you. So you can see that these computers are connected to switches, and there's a circle drawn around each one. So LAN 1 has a circle, gives you a sort of an indication, well, this might be LAN 1, that's a network by itself. LAN 2, there are two switches there. Uh, Omar, why do we have two switches? In that picture? Because just it's connected on the router to internet cable. Say it again? Connected to router like to uh, cable. Like mean to internet. I don't understand what you mean. Why do we have two ra two switches? I mean, why do we have two switches in that LAN 2? Because it's connecting LAN, LAN 2 by each computer for processing. Well, why don't we have just one? Why do we need two? That's the question. Why do we need two? Why don't you just have one switch? Because it's, it's sharing each other internet network. That's why. Why is it sharing it? Why does it have to share? There's got to be a reason. You don't just put two switches or three or four. Why do you need more than one? Uh, maybe this computer is far away from each other. For bandwidth? What about bandwidth? Like sharing internet packets like control, low or high. So you're saying there are two switches because it's sharing bandwidth? Yeah. Come on, guys. This is uh, let's go to... I don't understand what you guys are saying here. Freddy, why do we have two switches in LAN 2? I think the second one is to have its own um, isolated network from the public network, like its own intranetwork. 
And that's the that's the job of the switch to create an inter network. Uh, the second switch. So the, so switch, the second switch creates the router, right? So the second switch creates another network. Yes. But we can we can clearly see that there's just one network in LAN two. LAN two is just one network. So you're saying there's a set, there's a network in LAN two oh, that okay. we can see. Oh, all right. So I guess what we can say is maybe all right. So LAN two is a larger network. There are more computers, and a switch has a limited amount of ports. So we might need more switches for these computers. Exactly. That's it. There are more computers and switches have limited ports. A switch might have 12. It might have 24, 48. A switch has limited ports. So if one port is full, you got to add another switch. Switches never, never. It's not the job of a switch to create a network. The job of a switch is to service computers. If you want to create a different network, you need a router. If you have more computers, you need more switches. If you have, if the uh, ports are full. So you usually, you're going to have as many switches as you have computers. So if you say to me that the switches are there to create, you know, so they share bandwidth, you need to be reading this chapter over again and go to chapter one because switches don't share bandwidth. That is, that's for hubs and maybe um, Wi-Fi. Switches, the job of a switch is to, one of the jobs anyway, is to direct traffic to the computers that are connected to it based on two sets of information, the port number and the MAC address. All right, let's go on here uh, with routers. I went too fast. Okay, so one more thing before, oh, where is it? Okay, so right here, so routers enable LANs to communicate with one another. Um, and you have many routers along the way. Like we said, each router is equipped with information about the routers around it. Right? Each router is equipped with information about the other routers around it. So it knows where to route the messages. And that's how it eventually gets to its destination. So routers work with IP addresses, switches work with MAC addresses. Right? Routers, IPs, packets, switches, MAC addresses, frames. Now, routers also have routed tables, just like switches have switching tables. Routers have routing tables. Now, let's look at, uh, let's go to, let's look at the routed table and see if you guys can figure out what's going on there. Zicheng, are you there? Yes. Let's go to page 89. Actually, I have the picture here too in this, in this, um, I have the picture here. Right here. So on page 89, there's a picture of, of a routed table. So can you tell me what information you see in the routing table? Uh, network and the interface. Uh, All right. So, so what do you think the yeah. network, and what does that mean, the network? The network, uh, you can see on the left. Uh, All right. Yeah, 1.0, I think is the, the name of this uh, LAN. 
Uh, All right. Area, yeah. Yeah, you're right. So, uh, interface is basically, you know how we said, if you have multiple switches, you have a port on the switch that allows you to daisy chain to another switch, like connect the switches directly to, together. So something similar with your router device. The router has, it says here on page 89, routers have two or more interfaces. Right, so that inter interface there, in this in this example, there are three interfaces. All right, uh, Ethernet A, Ethernet B, Ethernet C. So the LAN, the marketing LAN, that's one local area network. It's connected. The switch is connected directly to the router, Ethernet A, and then the um, marketing LAN, and the last one there, the development LAN. So those are those are three separate networks. So you physically plug your switch into the LAN, I mean, into the router. So if the router has multiple um, interfaces or ports, then, you know, it can, it can, you can connect multiple um, networks to it. So it depends on how it's designed and how it's configured, right? So the router looks at its routing table when it gets a message and it wants to know, what are the networks that are in my, in my, you know, what are the networks that are connected to me? What are the interfaces that are connected to me? Based on that, the router can make a decision on how to send the message or where to send the message. Is it to marketing, uh, the marketing land or to management land or to development land based on what is connected to it? So I have a question. Sure. So the routers work with the IP, the physical, right? Physical IP. Uh, the question in terms you mentioned during the class today about private IP and public IP, uh, what would be in terms of private, public? Well, to keep it simple for now, when we get to chapter, I think chapter four or five, uh, we'll talk about it in detail, but to keep it simple right now, routers work with public IPs, just kind of like zip codes, right? The router, when the router, so when the mail goes to your zip code, Eduardo, has it got into your house? No. It, it hasn't got into your house, but it's in your zip code. Correct. It can, it can, I mean, that mail can be for anybody in the zip code. We don't know yet, right? because there are lots of addresses in the zip code, but there's just one zip code. So the router takes the message to your, to your network based on your public IP. Now, when it gets to that network, the switch takes over from there. The switch does the, you know, like the, like the mail carrier goes from door to door. So the switch sort of, goes from computer to computer delivering the message, right? Based on the Mac and the port number. Now the private IP um, is attached to your individual computer, right? That, that private IP is to protect the identity of your computer. And we're gonna go into more detail about it and why, you know, why we have the private IP. But, you know, just enough to say right now, public uh, routers deal with public IPs. When the messages are going back and forth, uh, we're, we're also gonna talk about, uh, besides the private IPs, we're gonna talk about something called NAT, which stands for Network Address translation, right, a translation. All right, so network. So the router, um, you know, has to do this conversion back and forth. It's a private IP when it's going out, when it's coming back in, 
it has to be retranslated to your private IP. It's called, when we talk about it, it's called NAT, N-A-T. Uh, when you talk, when you talk to, uh, when you, when, if you hear conversations amongst IT people, they're gonna call, they're gonna call this something called NATN, right? Like, oh, we got to NAT that. You know, when I used, when I got into IT, and I used to hear all these things, I just, I, I had no idea what they were talking about. They, you know, they spoke in all this network code. I just, my head used to spin. Say, oh, we have to not, oh, we just not at that stuff. Oh, we got to not, you know, those, those, those networks. So like, <laughs> what is that? You know, you just keep running to Google to say, what exactly? Because you don't want to sound stupid, right? When you say, I mean, you're on a job, you're being paid. You're like, what was that? So you have to do like a lot of background research yourself, right? I mean, of course, it's, it's okay to ask, but, you know, my boss didn't like to answer questions. So you got to find a lot of stuff by yourself. Anyway, uh, let's wrap this up. So that's what the uh, routing table does. The routing table has the information about what network it's going to. Okay, uh, here's another question here. So let me stay with you, Eduardo. What happens when a router isn't connected to the network the packet is addressed to? What happens to the packet? Thank you. When the router is not connected to the network. What? I didn't hear that. I, I'm I'm just thinking the question. What happens when a router is not connected to my network? Um, I mean, it probably will not going to work. Uh, I mean, it's not going to have a contact. I mean, the the router only can connect you with the networks that are connected to the router. So yep. I don't think you can do anything. You can connect. So what happens, what happens to the packet? To the message, uh, it's probably it's gonna have. I don't know if I could use the term uh, collision. Collusion. What is the the, the terms when the, the 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 packet doesn't go back? The response is probably is not. Just a, use a re, use a regular English word. What happens to the packet? Uh, it's probably gonna have an error. It's not gonna go through. Uh, the packet. I think it's gonna. No, not gonna go through. Okay, uh, let's see what somebody else thinks here. Um, Brandon, what do you think? The router doesn't have the information. What does it do to the message? Uh, it's just gonna completely drop it. Drop it, not go through, drop it. Okay, well, let's see what it says here. Let's go to the next slide. All right, so what it says here, guys. So there are two things. It says default route and default gateway. So default route is where to send a packet when the router doesn't have an entry in its routing table. So if the message comes to the router and the router has, like, I don't recognize this information here, right? It sends it on something called the default route. Now, one of the guys in the other class used a great example which might help us. Think about it as your junk mail, right? Why does, why does stuff end up in your junk mail? Because the email system doesn't recognize it. Like, well, this kind of looks like, you know, it belongs to this guy, but I'm not so sure. I'm just going to put everything in this box here. And then you can figure it out yourself, you know, look at it and, you know, if it's good mail or whatever. So what it means here is when the router doesn't have the information, it looks like it's gonna send it on a particular route. Say, okay, I don't know where you're going, but just go this way. All the guys I'm not sure about, you're gonna go this way, a default route. So it doesn't, it doesn't toss it aside. It looks like it doesn't throw it away, but obviously, if mail, email ends up in your junk mail, it looks like it's lost, except you go and look at it, right? So it might as well be lost, but you know that sometimes good email ends up in your junk mail, right? So that's what the explanation is here. 
it appears that it's going to extend it to a particular route. And maybe eventually it can get rerouted. Um, it might be the same thing with, it just it gets lost. Right? So based on that, now there's something called the default gateway. The default gateway is, is the, that's how messages leave your network. Like the router, it's like, it's like the zip code where you live, right? Everything you set out of your, out of your home is going to first go through your zip code. It's go, then it's going to go through a lot of zip codes to get to where it's going. Networking is you know, similar. When, you leave, when stuff leaves your computer, first it encounters your own router, your own gateway on its way out. That is called default gateway. So uh, you might just need to remember those definitions there when you do your assignment. And that looks like, um, well, I mean, we're gonna refer to these topics like a lot. So this is not the end of it. Uh, so all these are like intros so that every time we talk about it, we come back, we make reference to it. It sounds a bit more familiar to you. All right. Um, something else we've got to do before we get out of here. Uh, let's see. Uh, Josh, can we go to your computer? I need you guys to get it. I think I said, I said this before that part of your, part of this course, you're going to build a cable. Does that sound familiar to you guys, Josh? So let me just show you the information. Nice. So if you share your screen, you want to go to page, let's see what page is that? That's in chapter four and page 189. All right, uh, chapter four, page 189. All right, uh, you just passed it right there. Now, before you get here, let's go like four pages up, the previous pages. I want to go to where we see this blue cable. Keep going. You're almost there. Keep going. Right here. Okay, so right there. Um, so you're going to build a cable as part of your... Part of, part, of, part of this course. Um, so are there a few components to this cable? So the picture before this one, the previous page, uh, Josh, just scroll up one more page. All right, so this, this is called an RJ45. This is what you plug into that blue cable on the both ends. So let's go down. That's what goes into both ends. And that's, how, that's, what you con that's your connector. That's the connection that goes into the computer, right? Um, so, part of this course requires you to build a cable. Now, it's probably you're probably not going to be able to find cables that have no ends. If you buy the cable, it's going to have ends, right? I mean, except you're buying like a lot of cable for some industrial assignments, you know, building stuff. But you're probably going to buy a cable that already has the ends. So, what other students do? They buy a cable. Uh, a good length, they cut off the ends, and then they start, you know, doing their work with that. So if we go down to that, uh, to those items that we need to build the cable. Keep going. Right here. So the items you need to build the cable, I mean, these are not very expensive items. I think that max you should spend 20 bucks or 25 bucks max, if at all. So the things you need here, you need the crimping tool, right? The crimping tool, the blue one on the left, that helps you to cut the cable, helps you to uh, press down the RJ45 connector to the cable itself, right? It does a lot of stuff. Uh, you probably have a scissor somewhere lying at home. Um, so you need the crimping tool you need the cable, right? The cable, a, length, a good length of cable because you're probably gonna do it two or three, four times. And you might, every time you cut, your cable gets shorter. 
So make sure you have a good length of cable when you start. If you have a very tiny length of cable and you start cutting, 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 well, you're going to run out of cable. So you need a crimping tool. You need uh, a length of cable. You need RJ45s, right? RJ45s. The RJ45s come in like packets of 12 or 24, stuff like that. Um, and then you need a tester. Now, you may not need a tester if you can show that when you plug the cable into your computer, it works, right? And the tester doesn't, the tester doesn't look this, I mean, this one here is like, you know, real big deal. You know, you need a, a simple tester. So when you plug both ends of your cable in the tester, it lights up and tells you it's working, all right? Now, when you're doing this, when you're building this cable, you are going to document what you're doing, right? Two, you have two options. You can do a video of what you're doing. So you're going to show us all the parts before you start. You know, the cable, the RJ45s, the crimping tool, maybe the tester, right? You're going to show all that in your video. And then you're going to show how you're assembling everything together, the whole process. If you don't want to do video, you can take pictures of every step you take. Now, you are allowed to work with somebody else. So if your brother is good at this kind of stuff, or your sister, or a friend, or your dad, or your mom, I don't care. You can ask anyone to help you. They can even be in the video, right? Or in the pictures. It doesn't matter. I just want to see that you're able to do it from start to finish. All right? So now chapter four, we're going to get to chapter four, I think, by worst case, the last week in March. So by the last week in March... You want to have done this. So you don't have to do it now. You might want to place your order now if you want. If you live around Cambridge, right, around Cambridge, uh, Michael Center, you know, sells all this stuff, you know, just across from the Charles River in Cambridge on Memorial Drive, just Harvard, uh, Harvard University, MIT, that you get to, you know, Michael Center is around there. Or you might want to get it somehow, somehow right? So we're looking at the last week of March when we start talking about this stuff for you to have all your materials and build your cable um, at home. If you were on campus, right, if we were at school, you wouldn't have to. You just do everything in the lab. We do everything together. Everyone brings out their cables and build it together. But you got to do it virtually. And you have to document what you're doing so you can show the class. You're going to show the class. Maybe your video or your pictures, like, hey, guys, I'm all set. Look at it here, and it works. So I'm going to put the information for you um, in Blackboard, and I'm also going to release the assignment to you for assignment two. So that's all I got. Let's do the attendance, and if you have questions, let me know. Uh, I, have a I think we're done. Professor? Uh, one second. Why don't we just do the attendance first? I don't want to forget that, and we might run out of time for the attendance. So let's just get that out of the way, and then we'll take questions. So let's see. Uh, today's three two. Oh, come on. Thank <laughs> you. 